Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Don Jeffrey, Vice Chancellor of Troy University, Dothan's campus. Welcome students, faculty, staff, family, and friends, and especially candidates for graduation. Welcome to the commencement ceremony for spring 2021. I'd like to begin by recognizing our stage guests and that the, ask that each person stand when recognized and that the audits hold its applause until all have been introduced. Starting at my right, Dr. Dewey Todd, Assistant Dean, Sorrell College of Business. Dr. Kurt Davis, Associate Dean and Director of Operations of the College of Education. Dr. Mary Ann Templeton, Associate Provost, Dean of the Graduate School. Dr. Jack Hawkins, Chancellor of Troy University. Dr. John Smith, our guest speaker, who will be formally introduced in a few minutes. And Dr. Ed Papanastas, Professor and the Wallace D. Malone, Jr. Distinguished Faculty Award recipient. Let's recognize these platform guests, please. And each and every one of you are special guests to Troy University, but I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge my wife come August of 54 years to my left today. <laughs> Betty Jane Jeffrey. A lot has changed in the last three decades. We've seen the world go online. We've seen five presidents take office. One constant over these years has been the leadership of our chancellor, Dr. Jack Hawkins, during the time. He had a vision, the drive, the adaptability to keep Troy University ahead of the curve and on the front lines of higher education in this country. He embodies the term servant leader, whether serving his country in the United States Marine Corps and a veteran of foreign wars, Bronze Star and Purple Heart recipient, and today serving as the longest standing president of higher education in these United States and for the greatest students in the world at Troy University as our leader of this institution. It is my honor to introduce our Chancellor, Dr. Jack Hawkins, Jr. Thank you, uh, thank you, Dr. Jeffrey, for that generous introduction and welcome to a day that we consider the most important of the year at Troy University. No doubt this is a day that we can all celebrate mission accomplished and I know uh, those students who are about to be alumni of this institution are proud to arrive at this point. So I want to begin by congratulating you, but you know, and I know, that uh, you didn't get here by yourself. It took a lot of support and largely family support for you to experience this achievement. And families, uh, we value family values at Troy University. I'd like for you to stand up and let our graduates have one more opportunity to say thank you for your love and your uh, time of support and your investment in their future. Please, if you're a family member, please stand up and let all of us say thank you to you. And we, we absolutely are grateful to you for the support you have provided. One of our greatest strengths at Troy, and we often say the most important thing we do at Troy is to serve our students. But uh, the second, and it's a very close second, and that is to uh, invite others to be part of this faculty and staff. They give so much of themselves, and I'm proud of our faculty and staff, and I'd like for the members of the faculty and staff to please stand up and let us say thank you for the role that you've played in helping these students get to this place in their journey. So please, faculty and staff, please stand up. Thank you. Many of you uh, are aware of the great history that Troy has enjoyed over the last 71 years actually extending more than that, but it was, in, it was in 1950 that we went on board Camp Rucker and our service to the military began in earnest. It extended to Maxwell Air Force Base in later years and 
then to Fort Benning in 1974. We went to 10 countries, uh, 26 military bases in Europe. And then we went worldwide. And today, about a third of our students are military connected. So the military is a very, very important part uh, of our constituency of Troy. Yesterday, and some of you may have been there to celebrate, we had Armed Forces Day on the Dothan campus. And actually, it was sponsored by the friends of Army Aviation, and there were helicopter rides uh, provided to hundreds of people. Uh, it'll be there again next year. So if you're in the community then, I hope you'll join us. But this is Military Appreciation Month. I'd like for those men and women and the spouses who have supported them, if you have served or currently serve or have helped someone who has served, please stand up and let us say thank you because we know freedom is not free. Please, military personnel, veterans, and families. Thank you. And yesterday, a special group was at Armed Forces Day and that uh, they included four brothers. I call them the band of brothers, four brothers of Dr. Don Jeffrey. And collectively, they have served over 102 years, including several wars. Dr. Jeffrey, let us stand up and say thank you to your brothers for being some of the greatest patriots we've never known. So thank you, Dr. Jeffrey. And to the class of 2021, all of you are needed. What we've observed, and that's why the focus on leadership uh, exists at Troy University. We need strong leaders in this country today more than we've ever needed them. Leaders, as Thomas Jefferson said, who understand integrity, ability, and vision, and put those things to use. There will be a lot of communities that invite you to be part of their leadership. And I would remind you of what Mother Teresa says she said. She said, everyone can do something, whether it's run for public office or simply be engaged in the local PTA. All of us can make a difference. And I know you're prepared to do that. And I encourage you to do that. And it's my honor on behalf of our National Alumni Association to welcome you to the alumni body that now numbers over 166,000 worldwide. And we have alumni in every globe, around the globe, in every clime and place. In fact, uh, many of you may not be aware that in 2008, we became the first American university to ever award the bachelor's degree in Vietnam. And today we have more than a thousand graduates who are making a big difference in that faraway country. And so we have alumni just like you that are making a difference around the globe. And I welcome you. And I come bearing a gift from the Alumni Association. And that is one year's free membership in the National Alumni Association. But as they asked me to extend that gift, they asked me also to emphasize one year. We want you to be active uh, throughout uh, the future uh, because one thing that I'll tell you today, you may not remember anything else, but the one thing I would want you to know is the value of your degree is not stagnant. It'll either grow and improve in value over time or it'll decrease in value. And we come to work every day trying to add value to your degree. You're the greatest recipient or beneficiary of that value. And so work with us, stay involved with your alma mater, and let us hear from you, and please be engaged. It's a real pleasure for me to welcome you. I'm proud of you, and I'm also proud to introduce a gentleman today who I've had the good fortune and the blessing to know for more than a half of a century. I met uh, Dr. John Schmidt in 1965 and had, have watched with great pride as he has served several institutions, but the two most important, one was the United States Marine Corps where he served for 24 years, uh, fought in two different wars, actually three, uh, Vietnam, Desert Shield, and Desert Storm. In my estimation, and he retired as a colonel in 1974, 
He was indeed what I would label a Marine's Marine, one of the great leaders that I've known, and I'm so proud to be able to introduce him to you. He joined Troy University as a senior vice chancellor in 1994. He retired uh, in, in 2014 after 20 years. And uh, two years ago, I was able to uh, recruit him back on board uh, to active duty with the university and he has served since then, entering retirement only a, two weeks ago, a third retirement. I've uh, known him to be nothing more than stellar in terms of integrity. He is what Thomas Jefferson would label the true leader in this country. He has uh, three sons, all graduates of Troy University. Uh, he is what I would call a true, true patriot, a true Trojan, and we're honored to have him to deliver your commencement address today. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Colonel John Smith. Dr. Hawkins, thank you for your gracious introduction. For the past half century, your own leadership in higher education is second to none. And for some 30 plus years, you have added value to the Troy University degree, increasing Troy University stature in our state, in our nation, and globally. Thank you too, Dr. Jeffrey, for your great friendship over so many years and for your faithful leadership to Troy University on so many levels and for your invitation to speak today. Family members, spouses, and friends of our graduates, let me add my own thank you for your love and support for the achievements of the graduates that we celebrate today. And graduates, congratulations. You have achieved and earned a personal goal that reflects great credit on your hard work and your determination, your determination to lead change and to change your lives. And I'd ask you also to remember, today is a day the Lord has made. Take time to rejoice and be glad in it. You know, being a realist, I realize that the only thing that stands between you getting the degree and me is my address and my comments. So I'll, I'm going to make my comments brief, and I'm sure you'll appreciate that. <laughs> but in preparing my comments, my focus kept on returning to what is the mission of a university? And why are we celebrating you today? Certainly, Troy University gives you the knowledge and skills for your professional life. But I believe a university is more than just earning a degree. Universities certainly much teach students to think and to stand on their own in their profession. But I believe also a university has an obligation to help students live lives of virtue. You know, recently, Troy University has launched a new advertising campaign that centers on having vision, leading one's life, and leading change, as well as lead, helping others. You know, that's a tall navigational order. So let me keep things simple, and let me talk about your life as a ship on the sea of life. And in that journey, you need navigational aids. And the three navigational aids I want to talk about are faith, hope, and charity. You know, Dr. Hawkins mentioned my career as a Marine, and I'm very proud of that. You know, if you've ever seen two Marines passing in Costco's, Walmart, on the streets, and they have a Marine ball cap on or a Marine t-shirt on, you might hear, hear the phrase, simplify. It means semper fidelis, always faithful. And I'd, it reminded me today that that title means that we must, as Marines, have lives of honor, courage, and commitment. And those are three great virtues of themselves. But I want you to think of faith as a navigational aid, steering your personal and professional life. You know, my last seven years as a Marine was spent as, at sea, and I deployed on almost every amphibious ship on the East Coast to include the aircraft carrier USS Theodore Roosevelt. And our lives are like those ships at sea. We're not built to stay in the safety of a harbor. We're meant to take that ship of, of life and journey in the seas of life, where they have storms, tempest, winds crashing against us, I almost find it difficulty to, to also drift ashore. 
In fact, if you recall, maybe about two months ago now, the 2,000 ton container ship, 200,000 ton container ship ever given was stuck in the Suez Canal. Now here was a ship, a crew, and a captain had navigated the 150 mile stretch of the Suez Canal uh, on a weekly basis. So they knew the water. And yet, the ship gets caught crosswise in the canal, blocking all the traffic. In fact, we're feeling the impact of that even today in shortages of lumber, computer chips, etc. So it not only stopped the canal, but all other ships from getting in there. So in any event, our, our lives can become just like that ship, stuck crosswise. We can rely on our own personal skills, our behaviors until life erupts in a sandstorm. Just like that captain was very confident in his abilities and yet was overcome by the sandstorm and the windstorm that caused it to go crosswise in that canal. In our sea of life, it could be family issues, loss of work, drug and alcohol abuse, but not only our own lives impacted, but the lives of those around us. It's in these times of tempest and angst, when our ship is grounded, that we may forget about our faith and our faith in God. We see such lack of trust and faith even in Jesus' selected disciples. If you recall in Matthew chapter 8, verses 23 through 27, Jesus is asleep on the boat with his disciples. Now these disciples were skilled fishermen. They knew the sea, they knew the winds, they knew the waves. And here they are in this ship being tossed about in the windstorm. Jesus is asleep in the back of the boat. What do these skilled fishermen do? They go awake Jesus and ask him to calm the storm. Jesus awakes and does just that. But problems in our life can't be satisfied our own skills, our own abilities. How about those times when things don't work out as planned? Failure in a promotion, a family death, a serious illness. Do we despair? Do we get angry with God? Or do we keep our faith in God? That's where God plays an essential role. He's always with us. He only waits for us to ask. And he'll answer in his own way, in his own time. Yes, being always faithful can be tough, especially in a world where we want it now and we rely on our own selfish pride. And sometimes those crushing blows are a test of our faith where the outcome could indeed be a blessing. We just have to be aware of that. You know, my own walk of faith in it's taken years really to fully appreciate this, how faith and trust of God had yielded so many blessings. I'll give you one quick example. One blessing is coming to Troy University some 20 years ago at the invitation of my good friend of over 50 years, yes, we're old, uh, Dr. Jack Hawkins, Jr. At Troy, other university opportunities came my way, and at each time, through prayer and faith, Troy won out. So I would tell you, or I'd ask you, that with your new degree, other opportunities are gonna emerge. Take time to pray before you act. Have faith in your abilities, but trust in God to guide your decisions. Be leaders also, mindful of your relationships with others and those faithfulness in those relationships. Be leaders who earn the trust and the faith of others. Well, we know with faith comes hope, the second navigational aid. And good leaders are like candles. They burn themselves out, giving light to others. You know, that's the simple and powerful message of hope, leading by giving light to others. I love the, the definition that Dr. Jack Hawkins has about hope, or about leadership, I, I should say. He said, leadership is indeed the management of hope. And in that definition, we see hope as a combination of a leadership of self and of others, linked with taking advantage of opportunities. And in that regard, I know there's football fans out there, so let me give you a little story, a true story, about the legendary coach Paul Bear Bryant of Alabama. He was a young football coach at Texas A&M, and the next year he was added to the University of Alabama. Well, everybody knew he was a tough, hard-nosed football coach focused on discipline. It was the last seconds of Texas A&M's football game, and it was a tough opponent. All, all during the game, this defensive halfback had been given the team fits. It's the last seconds of the game. Texas A&M is in the lead. All the quarterback has to do is take the ball, basically take a knee, and the game is over. 
The ball is snapped to the quarterback. He fumbles. This defensive back, who's been a menace all day, comes across, scoops up the ball, is headed for a touchdown with only seconds left. The quarterback begins chasing this defensive back. He catches him and tackles him just before the clock strikes zero. Game is over. Next day, the opposing coach calls Bear Bryant and asks him, he said, Coach, how did your quarterback get so quick and so fast? So Bear Bryant, in that gravelly voice of his, said, Coach, you don't understand. Your guy was running for a touchdown. My guy was running for his life. <laughs> so it is with our lives. We hope for victory, but oftentimes we fail to run for the opportunity that life gives us. Today, with your degree, you have earned a hope-filled personal win by reaching a new opportunity. I challenge you to continue to be that leader that uses a desire for change for your own success, but be like that quarterback. Be that leader running to give the light of hope to others. And indeed, the third navigational aid is virtue, the virtue of charity, of love. And indeed, the fruit of faith is love. Mark Twain once commented that the language of love or kindness is a language that the deaf can hear and the blind can see. And that's so true. People really don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. One of my favorite examples is of a, of a loving and caring small-sized Catholic nun who gave her life tending to the poorest of the poor in Calcutta, India in the, in, in the, in the 70s and in the 80s. That nun was Mother Teresa who won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1979. In fact, one of our former political science professors, Dr. Marianne Lafleur, met Mother Teresa in India in the late 1990s. She gave her a Troy University blanket. But you see, Mother Teresa was the ultimate regifter. That blanket was probably on the back of a poor soul who needed that on the streets of Calcutta that night. Mother Teresa, by her example of humility, kindness, and love of those less fortunate, truly preached the gospel of love by her actions. I'd like to share with you two powerful quotes that talk about leading with charity. First, prayer gives us a clean heart, and a clean heart allows us to see God in one another. Today in our communities, our state, our nation, we so need prayer leading us to see God in each one of us. We need to treat each other with dignity and respect, and to care for one another with a servant's heart. Mother Teresa had other examples, but one great quote that I'd like to share with you was, she said that God does not call us to do great things. God calls us to do small things with great love. And I'd like to, for this moment today, think of those small random acts of kindness that sometimes we forget about in our technology age. I know in the past when I was on campus, I would often say hello in a relational type setting as we passed by on the sidewalk. And yet today, I notice students and adults in communities in the mall are, have the cell phone in their face and forget to see one another, where a, a friendly hello or a warm smile could warm somebody's heart. You know, emails are great for sending messages, quick messages, but a personal handwritten note says you care. How about a surprise phone call to a family member, a relative, or a friend that you haven't talked to in a while? Visiting a nursing home. These are small acts of kindness done with care and concern for others that brightens that person's day. But not only does it brighten that person's day, but these actions bring joy and peace of a clean heart to you. In the process, you become servant leaders who inspire with faith, hope, and charity. I'd ask you too, as I mentioned, as you launch your ship in the navigational waters of the sea of life, take time too to bring that ship back into port, to replenish, to renew, to refresh. Today is one of those days you've studied hard. Take time, as I said at the beginning, to embrace this day 
and rejoice in it. In closing, be thankful for this day and the many blessings of life that we often take for granted. Your new degree has enabled you to achieve a new course and set a new pace on your, on your sea of life. Utilize and practice those virtues of faith, hope, and charity as navigational aids. Be a person of faith in loving God and being faithful in all that you do. Pray daily. Foster hope in being that guiding light, a beacon of hope for others. And love your neighbor as yourself, especially as you journey doing those small things with great love. At the end of your personal journey, I hope you would be like the now deceased columnist Irma Bombeck once wrote. Someone asked her, says, Irma, when you reach the pearly gates and God asks you, what did you do with the gifts and talents that I gave you, how are you going to reply? And Irma Bombeck replied, she said, I hope that I want to see God. I can tell him I gave him everything that I had. Continue to give everything you have, and I'll leave you with a mariner's wish for fair winds and following seas. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. J. Thank you uh, so much, Dr. Schmidt. It was St. Francis of Assisi who said, preach the gospel at all times and when necessary, use words. You know, leadership truly is uh, about the walk and not so much about the talk, but when the two come together, when the walk and the talk intersect, that's true leadership. And that is Dr. John Schmidt. And John, let me say on behalf of the uh, state of Alabama and this, if you'll come forward, uh, and on behalf of the Alabama State Senate, I won't read all of this, but I would say uh, to you that uh, the, the Alabama State Senate has recognized your service, not only in, at Troy University, but also in the United States Marine Corps. And uh, they, it's even written, Dr. Schmidt has compiled an outstanding record of community service, earning widespread respect for his commitment and competence. And now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate of the Legislature of Alabama that we take great pride and pleasure in commending the professional achievements of Dr. Schmidt, and by copy of this resolution, we convey to him our highest esteem, along with the best wishes for future health and happiness. Thank you for making this world a better place. Thank you. Will the candidates for the associate's degree please rise? Dr. Hawkins, these candidates have completed all requirements for the associate's degree, and on behalf of the faculty, I recommend that the degree be conferred. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and approval by the chief academic officer and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Troy University and the laws of the state of Alabama, it's my pleasure to confer upon you the associate's degree which you have earned. Congratulations. Please move your tassels from, to, from the right to the left and you may be seated. Will the candidates for the bachelor's degree please rise? Dr. Hawkins, these candidates have completed all requirements for the bachelor's degree, and on behalf of the faculty, I recommend that the degree be conferred. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and approval by the chief academic officer and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Troy University and the laws of the state of Alabama, it's indeed a pleasure to confer upon each of you the bachelor's degree which you have earned. Congratulations. Please move your tassels from the right to the left and you may be seated. Will the candidates for the master's degree please rise? 
Dr. Hawkins, these candidates have completed all degree requirements, and on behalf of the graduate faculty, I recommend that the degree be conferred. Upon the recommendation of the graduate faculty and approval by the chief academic officer and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Troy University and the laws of the state of Alabama, it's indeed a pleasure for me to confer upon each of you the master's degree you have earned. Congratulations. Will the graduates of the associate degree please come forward? Elizabeth R. H. Carter. Shakira Tashawn McGill. Will the graduates of the bachelor's degree please come forward? Joshua Gorham. Michelle Dion Gray. Yes. Congratulations. Channing Starks. Simone Swain, cum laude. Melody Elise Hammond Ware, cum laude. Joni Arlene Alford, magna cum laude. Thomas Dalton Andrus, summa cum laude. Kiana N. Coleman. Alexandra Greco, magna cum laude. Hello. Akila. Akila Howard Brown. Jabria Taviel James. Sarah Nicole Lum. Tyler. Kirkland Meggs, magna cum laude. Spencer Stonehouse. Brantley Cade Thompson, summa cum laude. Okay. 
James R. Davis, Jr. Charity Christine Ferguson. Dorothy Hicks. Cynthia Lee Cook. Caitlin Marie McAnulty. Brianna Renee Miles. Ashley Ray Norris. Alicia Nicole Schenk. Taylor Michael Slowinski. Jordan Lee Strickland, magna cum laude. Sylvia Watkins. Carly Dawn Williams. Jayla Dawkins, summa cum laude. Heather R. Freeman. <laughs> Melody Crescinda Harrison, cum laude. Rose Hughes, magna cum laude. Kelly Shea Kinsall. Reagan Caroline Laney. Brianna Nicole McGee, summa cum laude. Callie Renee Melton. Chastity Mills, cum laude.
Sandra Elizabeth Monter. Teresa L. Morgan, magna cum laude. <laughs> Mary Frances Phillips, summa cum laude. Karen Rhodes, cum laude. <laughs> Jennifer Roberts. <laughs> Taylor Shea Skipper. Cum laude. The Taurus Teague. Jeffrey Scott, Ty Alonzo. Congratulations. Thank you. Naija Walton, cum laude. Sarah Ann Bass, cum laude. Haley A. Balkum. Kamisha Michelle Bolden. <laughs> Michelle Ann Beecham. Chandra Bradley. <laughs> Emily Claire Brookins. Tamika Partridge Carroll. Tamika Burks Cruz. Jasmine Dudley. Katisha Michelle Grant. <laughs> oh, 
Bridget Money Hewitt. Dustin Lamb. Aisha Lee. Mary W. McCullough. <laughs> Madison Embriel Morgan, summa cum laude. Shelby, Anna Lee Smith. Sakibra Ward. Will the graduates of the master's degree program please come forward? <laughs> Ashley Renee Tyson. Ashley Webb. Joshua Kyle Ballou. Keith Thomas Bonner, Jr. <laughs> Tiffany Monday. Adam G. O'Reilly. Deanna Averett. Harold Craig Demby. John William Morrow. Jasmine Reynolds. Kate Victoria Temples. Oh 
Mindy Marie von Ansbach Young. Ashley Ann Farrell. Kristen Zorn Goodson. Jessica Lynn Hicks. Emily Caroline Hughes Jenkins. <laughs> Erica Shea Littlefield. Jalicia Chantel McElroy. <laughs> Jennifer Brogan Louise Palmberg. Amanda M. Sewell. Jassity Ann Slinker. Serena Danae Stevens. <laughs> Alexia K. Vasquez. And Whitney Ann Whitaker. Please stand for the singing of our alma mater by Miss Lexi Henson. You can find the words printed in your commencement program, page four. Fuck 
guiding light of Troy. Thank you, Lex. Before we bring this ceremony to a close, please help me thank the people who helped make this event possible. Ms. Amber Pittman, our pianist, Sharon Tolison, our faculty marshal, Dr. Ed Papanastas, our floor marshals, Ms. Susan Green and Debbie Kirby, the outstanding staff on the Dothan campus, including Sandra Henry, Melissa Lambert, Sandra Carter, Tori Andrew Spray, Kay Peterson, Tatum McClendon, Charlene Hopkins, Cassandra Hawkins, Sandra hatfield Sauls, Dr. Petway, and our campus security officers and Clint Evans. Let's recognize these people. At this time, our benediction, we'll have our benediction. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you for your powerful protection over our lives as we go different places and embark on new journeys. We ask that you watch over our path and keep our footsteps secure. Protect our coming and going. We pray that no weapon formed against us will prosper and that you will be our constant shield and defender from the enemy's attack. Please hide us in the shadows of your wing. Be our refuge and security in a, every place we go. God, as graduates, we ask that you help us to walk in wisdom and grace. We pray for spiritual eyes and discernment in all things. Help us to be wise leaders and influencers in this generation, not conform to this world, but transformed by your power. Lord, we thank you for equipping us with all we need to make a difference for your purpose. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much. These commencement proceedings are now completed. Congratulations, graduate and audience. I ask that you stay in place until all the graduates and the platform party have exited the arena. The graduates will exit out the two side doors following the floor marshals. Guests, we ask that you please give the graduates a couple of minutes to exit the building, and then you may exit through the second floor area south exit, arena south exit, and meeting the graduates outside. Thank you, and again, congratulations to all of our graduates, our families and friends of Troy University, and thank you, Dr. Smith, for a great presentation. <laughs>